Hello everyone, it's Jaron Brackett with NCSI back to share with you some more knowledge about Avanti Endpoint Manager. Today we're going to talk about the CSA 5.0, of course, that is the cloud services application now. Big departure from the previous versions, which were appliances. In this new version, you can supply your own Linux server, configure it how you please, harden it any way you would like, and then install on top of that the cloud services application. 5.0 from Avanti. There's a lovely article that walks through all of this. That link will be available in the video description if you would like. Um, I recommend going there. That's where the download is and it has the more nuanced instructions that I'm going to offer. But I'm going to start here with my VM. This is a blank VM that I created adhering to um, the hardware requirements for the cloud services application. I always recommend testing the media and then having it installed. So I'm going to let it do its thing here. This will test the media installation and then begin the installation where we can choose how to install this version of Linux. All right, here we are at the installation GUI. I'm of course speaking English and in the United States, so those are the two I'm going to choose. Uh, the official support is English has been tested and supported. Other languages may work, but they have not been tested. So I'm going to hit continue here. Uh, we are going to make just a few changes here. So the first one is I'm going to create a super intense password for my root account. It's so intense, I have to hit done twice because it says it's intense. And then I'm going to create a normal user. I'm just going to call this NCSI and utilize a totally different, totally secure password there. And hit done. The reason we're doing that is uh, we want to have a user who does not have root privileges that can SSH in, whereas root um, will be locked down, so it can't it can't log in through SSH. Just another way to increase our security. All right. Next, you can see it's asking us about the installation destination, and I'm just going to let it do its thing. If you have other needs, you are welcome to change them as needed there. And then here under network and host name, I have two Ethernet connections. One will act as the internal. IP and network. The other one will act as the external. And so here I am able to give them their IP addresses. You can see it's my lab. I'm using DHCP. So that's not a problem at all. I will be giving it a host name. Just CSA. Lab.local. There we are. I'll hit apply here. And we are good. So normally you would be configuring this, obviously, and giving it a static IP address and whatnot. Um, for the purposes of this recording, I will not be doing that. Um, but please do make sure you input all of the information, including DNS, and then hit done. The other thing, and this is the most important, is the software selection. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to choose minimal install. Now, this is not a requirement for the cloud services application. This is a tactic to reduce the attack surface area of our server. So we're installing minimal basic functionality. I'm not going to add any further software on here. Of course, if you would prefer to do those, you can. Just know that this is the recommendation. Minimal install with no extra software selected. And um, everything looks good here. So I'm going to click Begin Installation. All right, and away it goes. We'll speed this up and see you on the other side. All right, that's done. So I'm going to reboot. All righty, here we go. So I'm going to log in as my root account. will elevate. I'm going to do user mod minus A capital G wheel. And then this is going to be my other user that I put in here. 
and we'll exit and exit again and that should get us back to here so I should now be able to log in as NCSI and I should be able to elevate <laughs> uh, might want to do that in the correct order there we go and there we go wonderful all right so now we're elevated I'm going to do DNF upgrade space minus Y and that will begin looking for the latest patches for Oracle Linux 9. All right, that's done. So I'm going to check my host name here. And you can see that's the host name I input earlier. You can change it if you need to using the host name CTL command, which would look like this. And then it would be the host name. All right. Again, spelling matters. All right, typically the lower of the two interfaces would be the inside and the higher interface would be the outside. I'm in a lab with only one connection, so uh, they're both on my, my <coughs> lab subnet. But in your case, you would normally arrange them like that. Uh, everything looks good here and we are ready to move on. Um, you are able to uh, edit the SSH access and eliminate the one interface, the external interface from that. Um, that's up to you. I, I leave it on because this is a lab and leaving it on doesn't hurt. But obviously in your environment, you'll want to do that. So let me show you how to do that. We're going to go over to my server here, I'm going to putty in, already puttied in as my non-root user. And I'm going to edit a file. The Etsy SSH SSHD config file, that one there. And I'm going to scroll down and find the listen address. <coughs> And then I'm going to go into insert mode, delete the comment hashtag there, pound sign for us older folks. And then I'm going to put in the address that I want it to listen to. So this would be my internal address, which of course mine are all internal. So um, those don't matter, but I'll put them in here. So 192.168.1.100. So now, in my case, I have 100 and 101. I'm going to pretend 101 is my external interface, so I only want it to listen for SSH connections on the 100 interface. So we'll escape that, write that, quit, and there we go. That's how you turn off SSH on the external interface. All right. Now we're going to do DNF module enable PHP 8.2. All right, it's already uh, already enabled. Wonderful. We're also going to do the same thing for Postgres SQL. Huh, that's my fault. I put an extra one in there. There we go. Good there. Now we're going to do a DNF install minus Y PHP space PHP dash PGSQL space PHP process space Postgres. I don't know if I'm not probably not saying that right. Postgres SQL server. All 
Alrighty, there we go. That is done now. Next, we need to download the CSA RPM file. That is also available in the link in the video description. And however you want to get it to your server is fine. You can do a wget, a curl. You can copy it up using WinSCP, which is the method I'm going to use. Now I've downloaded this outside of my lab and I will be bringing it in. And there it is. All right, now I'll open WinSCP. My username will be my NCSI user. There we go. And uh, the TMP folder is where I like to throw any file that I'm going to be working with temporarily. And there it is. Okay. From here, actually, we can use putty. There we go. All right, so the next command that we're going to do get my sudo back here. The next command is, and I don't need sudo on this because I already did it, is to install the RPM. So our RPM, as we know, is in TMP All right, I'm going to change directories here to the root. Don't know why that's not working. Okay. So there we are, and there is our file. And there we are, local install. And I'm just going to hit tab because the name was wrong from the commands. Oh, and I don't need the folder anymore. Oh. There we go. A little extra character there at the end. That will definitely mess you up in Linux. Or Windows, for that matter. Alright, this script is going to run. Uh, it's going to take just a few minutes. Once it's done, we'll be able to log into the web interface and what you're going to see is it is very similar to what you're used to with the old version. Okay, now that that's installed, I'm going to reboot. All right, we're back up. So now I'm going to attempt to access our CSA via a web page. So it's just the FQDN or the IP address, uh, port 443, so HTTPS forward slash GSB. And <laughs> almost forgot. Uh, this is admin and admin. So the users are separate from Linux. So you'll go and accept that very short and concise EULA and then create a password. Now this one I cannot overwrite 
So I am going to have to make it a strong password. And there we go. And here we are. So minus the system button that we're used to seeing in here, everything else looks pretty much the same. From this point, you can configure it like any other cloud services appliance, now that we're using the application. You can configure it, um, install a third-party certificate, and you can join it with your core server to begin using this new version 5.0. Also, you can install the remote control tunnel just like you did on your old CSA appliances. Um, the installation is exactly the same. You run the script file and uh, I do have another video for that on our channel. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching the video. As usual, if you found this uh, useful, please like and subscribe and wait for the next video to be released. Until that time, have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time.